So this tutorial is going to look at attributes and expressions and variables in Houdini. There's already a series of tutorials on the SideFX website dealing with this subject, but there are a couple of points that I certainly found difficult when I was learning Houdini that I wanted to highlight in this tutorial. So let's start by laying down a sphere, and I'm going to make it into a polygon mesh and let's dive inside. So let's set up a very simple expression, the simplest possible, which is to insert this $FF into one of our parameters here. And this has created an expression here. We can see that because the box has turned green. And $FF is a variable. The dollar tells you it's a variable, and FF is the name of the variable. In this case, FF refers to the floating point frame number. So what should happen is as I increase the frame number, the sphere will grow in the y direction, which is indeed what happens. And I can multiply it, add, use functions, and so on. $FF is a variable which just refers to the frame number. It's not connected to anything that's an attribute on our geometry. But there are attributes on geometry, as we can see here. Uh, here I've brought up a details view and I'm looking at the points. And we can see, for example, we've got PX, PY, PZ, PW as attributes. And then at the vertex level we've got point number and so on. You can also use variables to access these quantities, and we'll come on to that later on. How do you know what variables are available to you in any given context? Well, there are some variables which are available almost everywhere, and they're called the global expression variables. And I'll bring up a help window. And if we type in global expression variables we will eventually get a window with a list of them and of course they depend on context so these variables here are only available in the compositing context these ones are available almost everywhere. These are the variables connected to the frame and so on. And we've just used one of these, floating point frame number. So these are global variables, but we can see that none of them refer to attributes on geometry. They don't refer to the position of normals on geometry. There's another list of variables called standard variables. And these tend to refer to things which are attributes of geometry. So here we've got the point position, we've got the weight, we've got the bounding box, we've got the point number, and so on. Why are these called standard variables and not global variables? Well, the answer is that they're not available everywhere. It wouldn't make any sense here for me to refer to point position, for example, because our sphere is still being created at this point. It doesn't have any points, and so using $TX would have no meaning. Which variables are available where is a rather complicated issue in Houdini, and it depends entirely on the node that you're using. Let's put down a transform node. And let's see whether we can use $TX here. Well, it's not complaining, but equally we're not getting any result. Which variables are available depends a lot on which node you're in. Let's have a look at the help for the transform node.
There it is. And we can see that there's a section, as there is in most nodes, called local variables. And this tells us that we can use these variables here and implies, though it's not always the case, that we can't use any variables that aren't mentioned here. So we can't use tx, but we can use cx, c, e, y, and c, z, which are the centroid of the input. So that's the center of the object, if you like. And normally you would want to use that here in the pivot position. Doesn't make sense here because our pivot is already at zero. Let's look at an example where we can use a variable. And I'm going to lay down a polyextrude node. And I'm going to put into the local Y translation dollar PR. That's a bit too big. Let's put down dollar PR times point or one. And we can see, though the result is bizarre, uh, that what's happening is that each of the primitives in our object are being translated depending on dollar $PR. And dollar $PR is the primitive number. And we would see that if we looked at our list of standard variables. Knowing which variables are available in Houdini can be a bit hit and miss. It's best to look first at the help card for the particular node you're using, and then at the list of standard variables. If you don't find the variable you need in the help card, try using the one that's in the list of standard variables. It may work, it may not. What happens if we wanted to create a quantity and store it in a variable, as we might do in a computer program? Could we perhaps say that uh, $my equals $ff plus 1, as we would in a computer program? Well, the answer is no, we get an error. If we want to store information, we have to attach it to elements of our geometry. And this is where attributes come in. So let's create an attribute, which we can do using the attribute create SOP. And this can create attributes at three or four different levels. We can start at the vertex level, then the points, then primitives, and finally detail. A vertex attribute obviously exists for every vertex, a point attribute for every point. For a primitive attribute, there's one attribute per primitive. And this final level, detail, means there's one attribute for the entire network. So let's create a variable. Uh, an attribute rather, which we call myVar. And we're going to leave it as a point attribute and a float. And I'm going to use an expression, rand dollar pt. Now rand dollar pt is taking dollar pt, which is the point number, and feeding it into a random number function, which produces a random number between 0 and 1 based on what you have here. And if you have the same input, it produces always the same random number. So this should have set up an attribute called myVar. We can have a look at the details view. And indeed, there it is. And we can see each point has a different value. How would we then use this? Well, one of the things that we can do is use expressions to group geometry. So let's lay down a group node like this. And let's call it my group. So how am I going to access my variable and how am I going to use it? Well, if I choose group by expression, then I can use this parameter here to input an expression which is evaluated for every point, if we're using a point group is evaluated for every point, and then if it evaluates to true, the point is in the group, and if it evaluates to false, the point is not in the group. So to access my attribute, which I just created, I can use a variable, $myVar. 
and I'm going to say that greater than 0.5. And here in the details view we can see that some of our points are now highlighted. That means that they're a member of this group. And the reason that I have the dollar my var variable is because here in the attribute create sop I left the local variable parameter empty and that defaults to creating a local variable which is the capitalized version of the name. And we can tell what local variables we have on our attributes by middle clicking on a node and we can see we have custom variable mappings my var.